So uh, in this video I'm gonna go into what type of medical gear I carry in the van and uh, also in my daily driver and how I have chosen to categorize the different types of equipment that I carry inside the van and uh, when traveling. So first of all I carry a trauma kit that sits on the uh, center seat headrest that is uh, quickly accessible from both the driver's side, the center seat and the right hand side passenger seats. So uh, the driver or one of the passengers can access that very quickly and deploy the gear that's inside. And there's also one tourniquet that's fitted on the outside of the uh, trauma kit and another tourniquet inside the kit. So the headrest trauma kit, that's obviously only for, for us, the driver and the passengers in, inside the car in the event of an accident. So the other kit I carry that sits in the back of the van that's more non-emergency type injuries and sort of a combination between a IFAC and a booby kit with band-aids and bandages and also a small amount of uh, trauma gear such as uh, one or two tourniquets and things like that. And uh, last but not least is uh, the big bag right here which is uh, sort of like a mass casualty response type of uh, bag which has uh, kits for uh, massive hemorrhage and uh, hypothermia aid and uh, basically it's a trauma kit that's more of everything. So the scenario that this will be used is more of a road traffic accident with uh, lots of vehicles inside where I can grab this from the rear and uh, go out and be of as much assistance as I possibly can. So uh, this is not necessarily for the occupants in this vehicle but more of a major accident that I somehow happen to be involved with. So uh, more of everything in here and uh, few bonus items. So we will have a closer look on the contents of each kit and why I have chosen to fit them out as I have done. And I will not bore you with every details on every item inside here and inside the other kit, but I will go through some of the principles that I considered when I put these kits together. And with that said, this is uh, not by far a complete sort of uh, mass casualty kit or anything like that. And I wish to complement these kits with uh, a few other items that I yet not have bought. So uh, that's what I have right now and I will uh, show you what's inside. So I see you inside the studio. Okay, so let's have a look at all of these uh, kits right here. So the first one, like I said before, is the uh, headrest trauma kit. You can see the extra tourniquet on the outside of the kit as well as uh, two light sticks and a pencil or a pen for uh, marking stuff. And this is a slide type that you can uh, pull out like so and gain access to the equipment on the inside. And here's another tourniquet, an Israeli bandage, a scissors, another light stick, a ARS needle for needle decompression. We have uh, chest seals, an airways manager for uh, inserting into the nose and H&H uh, &H compressed gauze as well as an elastic bandage. So that's it for the trauma gear. And uh, also, like I said before, that's only for the occupants in the car. In the event of an accident where we might get stuck inside the car and we need to access that as fast as possible. So uh, this kit is only for us inside the car. And uh, also only for us is uh, this other kit that I access from the rear barn doors on the van. And this is like a hybrid between a trauma kit and a first aid kit. So uh, I have some equipment that overlaps, that is the same things that I have in the uh, main trauma kit on the headrest. There's another tourniquet. We have some other stuff like bandages and water gel for treating burn injuries and lots of band-aids and uh, steri strips and things like that. And my main reason for having a little bit of both in both the trauma kit and the hybrid IFAC trauma kit is because I want to have the uh, catastrophic hemorrhage or stop the bleed capability in both of those in the event that we are around camp and something happens and I need to access one of these two kits and uh, this may be the fastest one to gain access to since it's uh, situated on the rear barn doors and th those are usually open when we are static in one location and uh, camping and uh, making a fire and cooking food and that kind of thing so that's why I, I want to have tourniquets and other emergency response type of gear inside here as well as well as I do in that kit. So that's the reason why I want these two kits to overlap to some extent at least. So that's it for that. So let's move on to the uh, large bag right here. 
And like I said earlier, this is more of everything that's in these two bags. So uh, this is these two combined plus another few items as well that I don't have room for in either of these kits. So uh, let's start on the outside. I have a bottle of disinfectant gel. We have SAM splints for uh, stabilizing fractures. On the other large pocket here, we have some uh, bits and pieces, wipes, tape, gloves, a pocket mask for inflations. In these pockets here, another tourniquet, a pen, more bandages, an emergency blanket for uh, staying warm or reflecting the body heat from the casualty. More pressure type bandages. And in the big main compartment, we have two larger interior pockets that I can pull out quite easily. While this one is uh, more of uh, boo boo type equipment, we have band aids and uh, things for uh, cleaning out and disinfect uh, wounds and stuff like that. Uh, tape some other bandages and uh, smaller items here for keeping uh, things clean and neat when, when you need to uh, address the smaller type of wounds. So I can pull this out and start treating these smaller types of non-emergency wounds and uh, injuries with this one. While this is more of the uh, emergency bleed out kit, so I have uh, more tourniquets, more bandages, the uh, Oleas modular bandage. We have an Israeli bandage and we have uh, the airway manager, nasopharyngeal airways. We have a SWAT T tourniquet, more type of uh, responder gauze, compressed gauze for uh, wound packing. This is lube for the nasal tube. We have a uh, hemostatic gauze. Hyphen chest seal and some other stuff. Israeli bandage, scissors, and uh, protective gloves. So that's the bleed out kit that I can gain access to, or the more catastrophic type injury kit. And I can simply pull that out of the main bag and uh, leave it where it is and uh, treat massive hemorrhage with this bag that I can easily grip and pull out. More inside here, I have some sterilized liquid for rinsing and keeping stuff clean. I have two fleece beanies for keeping casualties warm and prevent hypothermia. And what I feel I'm lacking in this area in particular is uh, on the hypothermia prevention side and uh, more specifically the type of uh, oxygen activated active heat source like a ready heat blanket and uh, like a ready heat blanket for keeping casualties with uh, massive amounts of blood loss warm when they are not able to keep themselves warm by simply uh, wrapping them in a reflective foil blanket or other types of blankets or jackets and coats. So in those cases, it's absolutely necessary to have an active heat source. Either it's your own body that you can lay beside the victim and uh, keep them warm in that manner or these types of ready heat blankets that stay warm for about 10 hours or so in 40 degrees Celsius. So they are brilliant for keeping, uh, for treating hypothermia and keeping uh, casualties that suffer from severe blood loss to keep them warm. So uh, that's an item that I will add to this bag. And I actually already have those blankets in my online store, alcesadv.se where you can buy those and uh, I will definitely lay my own hands on one of these as soon as I can. So, uh, so one of two of those will go into this bag as well. And like I said earlier also, neither of these bags are complete in any way, but this is what I have chosen to bring for the main type of injuries and traumas that may occur while camping and being out with the camper van and driving on the public roads while also hopefully helping ourselves stay alive a little bit longer in the event of a major accident while we are a little bit more off-grid and uh, the uh, ambulance or emergency services are a little bit more far away. So that's my idea behind all this and obviously you can bring a whole lot more. 
but also at the same time you need to save some space in the van for uh, food and uh, camping stuff and bicycles and everything. But either way what you decide to bring is uh, not of much use unless you have the proper training and uh, experience on how to use the equipment itself. So the main thing in my opinion is to uh, make sure that you can seek out proper education and training for uh, acquiring medical skills and learning specifically how to stop major trauma bleeds and uh, catastrophic hemorrhage. So uh, that's the most important thing to get training and learn how to use all this stuff to make sure that you know what to do when yourself or uh, some of your loved ones or close ones are injured in a catastrophic or not as much catastrophic way but uh, that you are able to treat and save their lives possibly while waiting for the ambulance to show up. And even if you do have training and uh, skills in the, these areas, and, e e and even if you do have training and skills in uh, these areas, also extremely important to keep your skills fresh by continue to practice on yourself or on your friends and family to make sure that you uh, maintain those skills and, and not decrease your abilities over time that easily can happen otherwise. And like the saying goes, you do not rise to the occasion, you fall back to the level of your training. So with all that said, that's it for this video. I just want to show my thoughts behind constructing these kits and why I choose to overlap the equipment as much as I do. But for me, the principles are that I want to keep everything as close at hand as possible, especially the main trauma kit that's accessible within an arm's reach from either position in the main cab and uh, some other stuff that's not as easily accessible, but also at the same time, usually not as urgent as uh, getting access to the uh, life-saving trauma equipment. I hope I may have sparked some ideas on how to uh, put together your own uh, trauma kits and emergency first aid kits. And as usual, if any questions, either on the kit itself or on the thought process behind it, please leave a comment in the comment sections and I will uh, see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.